Okay. In this video, I want to talk um, very basically and briefly about the neuron, the um, one of the two main functional types of cells in the nervous system. Okay. There are two major types of cells that are involved in the nervous system or in nervous tissue, and that is the neuron and glial cells. Okay. I'll talk more to glial cells in another segment. Think of glial cells as support cells. Okay. But when we talk about um, you know, sensation, integration, coordination, regulation, it's neurons that do this, okay? Neurons do this by basically making synaptic connections with one another and sending information to and from one another. I mean, all, I mean, the body is really, realistically, we're kept alive through a complex series of, I guess you want to call it biologic wiring and electrochemical messages, okay? Now, in order to understand basically the, you know, the, 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 ma the major physiologic concept of an action potential, i.e. a nervous impulse, you have to understand the basic parts of the neuron first and kind of the role that each of these parts play. All right. So we'll start with the cell body and then we'll just kind of work our way down to the, um, to the end of the axon. Okay. So if you want to break a neuron down into two major parts, we can say that it has a soma, i.e. body, and an axon, like a, the wire that you think of, okay? Now the body is where we basically synthesize proteins, um, where we you know, make proteins for the cell to use itself to regulate its own metabolic activity, it's where we'll synthesize some neurotransmitters and other proteins that the axon might need, okay? So there's a lot of proteins transported down via the axon to where they need to go, okay? So this is basically where we regulate the activity of the cell, via protein synthesis, okay? And the other major, very major aspect of the cell body is this is where information is coming in, okay? So think of this as the input aspect of the cell, all right? So this is where the synaptic connections are made. So, uh, you know, so when a neuron is communicating with another neuron, okay, it's, it's synaptic terminals. They don't remember, remember when, we, when, we, when you talk about a synapse, the nerves don't, you know, the, the synaptic terminals do not physically contact um, the cell or the tissue itself. There's a little space in between. And then neurotransmitters are released, and then this is where you have the receptors for the neurotransmitters, okay? Now, remember, the neurons are very, there's, there's a lot of different types of neurons in the body that are sensitive to different types of input or stimuli, okay? It could be chemical messages or neurotransmitters from other nerves, okay? Information that a cell body may pick up could be pressure. You know, like when you put your glasses on your face or your clothes on and you feel that little bit of pressure on your skin, okay, that's input that the body is picking up. Okay, if it's a chemoreceptor, you know, it's send, you know, if we're sensing changes in our hydrogen ion levels in the body, you know, i.e. pH regulation, okay, it's the cell body that's going to receive or pick up that change, that stimulus. All right, so this is where sensory information or this is where that sensor this is where information in general comes into the um, into the nerve itself. Okay. Now there are these extensions of the cell body that increase the surface area of the cell body called dendrites. Okay, so that's all dendrites are. Think of them well, maybe not branches, but they're just extensions of the cell body that increase the surface area of the uh, of the cell. Okay, so as a result, you know, if you see if you look at a neuron under you know uh, you know underneath the microscope that has a lot of, uh, you know, dendrites, a lot of extension, that's telling you that's a nerve that's probably designed to receive a lot of information. You probably receive more information than it's sending out, okay? So keep that in mind, okay? So dendrites make it easier, because remember, when we're talking about communication, we're talking about chemicals physically, you know, binding to receptors, you know, neurotransmitters or other chemicals, okay? We're talking about something like pressure, physically, you know, influencing the membrane potential of that cell body, or chemistry, you know, actually, you know, influencing the homeostasis of the cell body, okay? So the more extensions we have, the higher the chances that this neuron is going to be receiving or taking in information, okay? So that's what dendrites are there for, okay? Now, there's an area called the axonic hillock. Okay, now remember, the, the axon hillock is, think of that as the gate between the cell body and the axon. Okay, now one thing that's unique about the axon hillock is that that's where there's the highest concentration of sodium-specific gates, or sodium channels. 
Okay, so when we want to initiate an electrical impulse, which is, which is what we call the action potential, this is where it begins. Okay, so we irritate this cell body enough. Okay, this is where the nervous impulse, you know, the, you know in, in, in layman's terms, that's where the nervous impulse or the action potential originates, is on the axon hillock. And I'll go in much more detail later on in the step-by-step -step process of how we do this. Okay. Now, on the axon, not of every nerve in the body, but um, on, on, on a lot of nerves in the body, there are, there is something called the myelin sheath. Okay, myelin is a lipoprotein. It's about 80% lipid and about 20% protein. Okay, and um, and basically think of myelin as an insulator. Okay, and cells that have or neurons that have uh, myelin on their axons okay, can generate action potentials much more quickly. They can send faster messages, basically, all right? And I'll talk more about that as to, as to how that happens, but for now, that's kind of how, how I want you to think, okay? And the spaces in between the myelin sheath are called the nodes of Ron VA, okay? The nodes of Ron VA, all right? So basically, when we're sending an action potential down a myelinated neuron, these are the parts that become depolarized, or where we see the electrical change, the electrophysical changes take place. Or electro, okay, um, and then as that electrical message, that action potential travels down to the very end of the axon, you reach these bulbous little structures called synaptic terminals. Okay, basically what these terminals are, they're just little. Think of them as storage areas for. I'm going to abbreviate this: neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are the chemical messages. The neurons send out. That's the whole point of sending the electrical impulse, the action potential. Once that, once we generate that action potential or that impulse down the axon, that's going to stimulate vesicles that store neurotransmitters inside these terminals, the fuse with the membranes, and then via exocytosis, you'll dump out neurotransmitters, and then the neurotransmitters will do what they do. They'll do what any chemical message does. They'll either increase or decrease the activity of whatever tissue they're designed to influence. Okay. And one thing to bear in mind as well is that, elect is that action potential, these nervous impulses, only travel in one direction. They go from the body down to the end of the axon. They never go backwards, okay? It's physically impossible for that to happen, okay? So keep that in mind, all right? And um, like I said, you know, keep going over these different parts of the neuron. You've got the cell body with dendrites, you know, the, where information is received. Dendrites make it, you know, increase the chances or make it easier for information to um, be received with that nerve. Then you've got the axon hillock. That's where the nervous impulse, i.e. the action potential, begins. And then there's the myelin sheath, the insulator, and the spaces called the nodes of Ron VA. And then you've got the synaptic terminals, okay, the, where we store neurotransmitters to be released. And the three major types of neurons in the body, we already talked about sensory and motor. Okay, input going in. These are nerves that travel in towards the spinal cord and the brain that tell us what's going on with our internal or external environment. And then we then once we process that information, we have output nerves, motor neurons, that send that information back out. Okay. And then interneurons, inter think of inter as in between. Okay, interneurons send information. Okay, these kind of integrate and figure out where specifically to send the information within the central nervous system. Okay, think of interneurons as relays. Okay, you know, if you have a painful stimulus coming into the spinal cord, you're not going to waste time sending that information up to the brain so you can sense pain and then move. Okay, an interneuron is going to say, you know, again, I'm speaking very generally, an interneuron is going to send, you know, painful in, you know, information about pain right back out so we can reflex out of that situation. Okay. Um, or if it's, you know, like if, I, or if I'm just touching this chalkboard, that's not threatening my tissue by any means. I'll just send the information up to my brain and I'll notice that there is a whiteboard there. Okay, so interneurons, and these make up the bulk of all the neurons in the body. I guess it's fair to say maybe 90% of the neurons in the body are interneurons. Okay, and these are only found within the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord. Okay, so again, review these basic parts of the neuron. You know, I know I went over this a little quickly, but I've got time limits to work with on here. And, um, you know, like I said, you know, keep these in mind when you're, you know, when we're going over the action potential.